One of the biggest wealth transfers that has ever occurred in our country's history has just commenced and nobody knows it's happening. I wouldn't even know it's happening if I didn't read it in the Farmer's Almanac the other day. Amazing book. I was on page two and they start talking about how 24 trillion in farming assets, farmland, barns, equipment is going to transfer hands over the next 20 years. Now, why is this happening? The average age of the American farmer is over 60 now. Think about that. They're tired. They're retiring. They can no longer physically run their businesses. Sure, some of them can pass it on to their children in a trust. Not all of them have kids, or as I've been reading, a lot of their kids don't want to inherit their farms. So that farmland's gonna be for sale. And it's a lot better in the future for you and me if everyday people buy this farmland as opposed to corporations, Wall Street, and foreign entities. I've talked to some of the farmers in this area. They have told me some disconcerting information that some firms, some investment conglomerates are kind of quietly approaching these farmers. They show up with a check. And it's not that these small farmers want to sell out to corporations. You know, that doesn't sound great to them either. It's just that at the end of their farming careers, they're exhausted. Some of them have debt. They're just trying to figure out a way to ride out the rest of their exhausted lives, basically. And these firms are snatching up American farmland right underneath our noses. If you have ever wanted to farm, like if you've ever wanted to do this, I, this all happened in one year. You guys know who've been following me one year ago. This was just plain old farmland, rural land that I bought with a loan, which I will be breaking down more on this channel. I didn't know what the heck I was going to do with it. I didn't know who was going to build me a structure on it. I didn't, I've never gardened a day in my life. So if I can do this alone, I did this completely alone, obviously with a construction company, an Amish construction company that built the structure. If I can do this, please let that be inspiration for anybody watching this. If you have ever felt the call to start farming, to start gardening, to start growing some of your food, to go off the grid, to start homesteading, to start a compound for your family, to do any of those things, there has never been a better time to do it because that farmland is going to be for sale. Now, I know a lot of you watching this are probably thinking to yourselves, that's great, Alex. Where do I find this farmland? I'm glad you asked. I found my farmland on Zillow. I filtered for lot slash land and I looked 20 minutes outside a city center. You are going to find uh, farming and rural land, usually 20 minutes outside of a city center. I found this land. I drove by it. I, very important, got out of my Jeep on this land and walked around it because land has an energy to it. I don't care what anyone says. And I put in an offer. I ended up using a loan through Farm Credit, the Farm Credit Network. I used it through Farm Credit East, which I'm happy to break down more about that on this channel. A lot of this farmland that is going to be for sale via these farmers might not make it to Zillow. And what I mean by that is these farmers are probably not on social media. They probably don't have profiles on Zillow. And a lot of them are too busy to even finagle all of this stuff online. They are just looking for somebody who is going to come along and offer them a solution. I have had countless people on my stub stack write in to me and say they have physically visited these farms, talked to the farmers, and next thing you know, they're leasing 20 acres off the farmer for $500 a month for 20 acres. And uh, there's a clause sometimes where the people will pay the farmer a payment for the rest of the farmer's life, maybe it's $500 a month, and then once the farmer passes, they get everything. That's just one of the many, many creative arrangements I've heard of. Farmers are generally probably government distrusting people and are much more willing to strike a deal with you personally than they are to go through banks and loans and all of that. My advice to you would be this weekend, lovely October weekend, get in the car, whether it's five minutes from where you live or you have to drive two hours to get to this farmland. Um, I met a guy this summer who is running a farm that's like two and a half hours outside of New York City and he makes the drive. Drive to an area where there's going to be farmland that you could see yourself farming and pull into these farms, shop at them, ask to meet the owners, ask to meet the managers, ask about what their plans are in the future for their land. You would be shocked and surprised to learn that a lot of these farmers may have thousands and thousands of acres and they are more than happy to rent 10 of them to you if that's all you need. And trust me, you need one eighth of an acre to grow all the food your family could ever need. And I've gotten the firsthand experience this year to know that and I'm going to be again covering all of that here for you guys. I took a four month hiatus. I am back um, just to give you a pan. This is the just gorgeous barn 
I'm screaming. My neighbors can hear me. That the Amish built me. And it is on the 6.74 acres of farmland that I ended up buying. And I've cleared about not even two acres, like maybe an acre and a half. And um, I don't know if you can see it out that way. I've left close to five acres of it wild, which has been one of the most rewarding things that I've ever done. And I'm so glad I didn't listen to anyone who told me to clear it. And I've learned so much about pollinators and local plants and native species that again, I'm going to be covering here for you guys. But if you are feeling the call to do this, let this be your sign. The, the, the revolution, the land revolution has begun. Okay, stick around. I have more coming your way. Bye.